Hello friends. This is Revenger What If. How are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto was the celestial hero of two worlds, power from within? But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time, let's begin the story. Kagaya a pale-skinned woman with delicate facial features. She had extremely long, sweeping white, hair. Kagaya possessed white clear eyes and her eyebrows were cut very short and round a symbol of nobility, and she wore a red shade of lipstick on her lips. After consuming the forbidden fruit, her hair grew even longer, dragging across the ground and her fingernails grew long and dark. Most noticeable, she grew two brown horns that stuck out from her head and a third eye formed in the center of her forehead. She wore a high-collared heim kimono which was tomo running down the center and edges of the gown and in the anime, adorned with intricate gold and purple lines. She glares emotionless at Kakashi and his blue perfect Suzano, black Zetsu how does he have a Suzano only an Uchiha like Sasuke Uchiha who has eternal Mangekyo Sharingan should have it. Stated Kagaya not fully understanding who the grey-haired man even created a Suzano, Baikugan, him from what I see he shouldn't be able to even summon something this huge. He should be dead. Thought Kagaya. The first chakra user then turns her attention to the black Zetsu who's on her sleeve. Black Zetsu how does that man have a perfect Suzano? Asked Kagaya. Black Zetsu a black creature with sharp teeth and yellow eyes cackles to himself. It must be that loser Obito he must have somehow gave Kakashi his Mangekyo Sharingan somehow. I don't know how that's possible since his Mangekyo is space and time and not spiritual Kagaya-sama even in death that idiot causes problems mother but Kakashi shouldn't be able to even use a perfect Susano. The people who are capable of using the perfect Suzano is the people who has eternal Mangekyo Sharingan and Obito doesn't have it, said Black Zetsu as he informs his mother and creator. Kagaya nods her head, it seem Black Zetsu doesn't know how that man has perfect Suzano but it doesn't matter he the pink-haired one, Asura incarnation, and Indra incarnation shall be dead and Chakra will finally be mine. Thought Kagaya. How will you deal with them mother Kakashi is the true brains of the team, stated Black Zetsu. Kagaya doesn't say anything just stares at the blue Suzano, I'll kill him and the rest will soon follow, said Kagaya in a cold emotional voice she then glares heatedly at Naruto and Sasuke. This time I won't lose, glared Kagaya in conviction. Kakashi looks towards his students and former students. This will be our last mission as Team 7. What we do know decides the fate of the future. Said Kakashi looking at Naruto, Sakura, and Sasuke. Sasus just hemmed to himself like usual. Sakura smiles brightly. Roger, said Sakura. Naruto grins. Yeah let's do it. We have a world to save Yano. Said Naruto smirking but deep down he knows this isn't going to be easy. Within his mind's Yin Kurama smirks at his Jinchuriki, don't forget about a certain ramen girl in Konoha is waiting for you. Snickered Yin Kurama enjoying teasing his Jinchuriki. The giant fox can almost see the deep crimson blush upon the blonde Uzumaki. Some people might wondered why Naruto is dating Ayame and not Sakura since his sensei Jiraiya had a thing for Tsunade and he was into hot-tempered woman. Naruto said he doesn't like aggressive woman and he didn't find Hinata attractive he did had a crush on Hinata when he was younger but he couldn't date her since she died when the crystal kunoichi crystallized her body killing the young Hayuga Naruto was saddened by his crush's death luckily Ayame was there for him and they soon started dating. Flashback month ago while the Konoha team were successful in stopping the child Yukimaru from using Isobu as a weapon for Orochimaru thus stopping the serpent Sani if he ever choose to make Yukimaru the third Jinchuriki of Isobu. Naruto made sure that the child and that Gurren the crystal release couldn't use Isobu for Orochimaru by using a collaboration jutsu of his wind release. Dead Dragon Grail, Futon, Dedodor Gongoriru, with Gamakichi's fire release, Burning Toad Gun, Kaden. Tosutogen Omiyasu, the orange shinobi and summoning toad had incinerated Yukimaru and Gurren to the point where the only left of their body is ash. Thus stopping the missing nin from cloning the two while the mission was completed the Konoha ninjas did suffer a loss and that loss was Hinata Hayuga heir to the Hayuga clan, member of team Kuranai and friend. It was a loss that everyone took hard but out of everyone from Konoha 11 Naruto Uzumaki took the death of Hinata the hardest. 
And why wouldn't he taken loss of Hinata the hardest after all ever since Naruto had returned he had spent as much time with Hinata as he would training or going to Ichiraku ramen. The blonde Jinchuriki did promise he had to tell her something but before he could tell the kind-hearted Kunoichi she was killed right in front of him if that wasn't bad enough. When Gurren had crystallized Hinata the purplinette Kunoichi had broke the crystal prison shattering it and Hinata in millions of pieces. While Tsunade had congratulated the ninja team at their successful mission everyone had cheered at the fact they completed a difficult mission well except Naruto who still had the memory of Hinata being brutally killed. While the blonde Uzumaki would be cheering at how he completed a mission this time he stayed quite not even bothered by the fact his eyes are bloodshot red with black rings around them from lack of sleep. Tsunade then notices one of her loudest ninjas is being quiet while Tsunade knew that Naruto and Hinata had gotten close these past months she had no idea actually how close the Uzumaki and Hyuga truly were Tsunade then gains a concerned expression. Naruto I know what you're feeling must age before the Godem Hokage can even finish her sentence he stormed out the room not even bothered by the blonde Senju or his female teammate loud pleas for him to stop. As Naruto exits the Hokage office he heads to Ichiraku but not to eat ramen but drink away his sorrow something that Anko Midarashi his training partner does on occasions as Naruto arrives at the place where he usually comes when he's hit a bump on the road. Naruto then sits down in his usual seat barely paying attention to the people around. Tuchi smiles at his number one customer and the village's hero his smile slightly deflates as he sees his once energetic customs who no looks distressed and as if he lost something Tuchi had guess it had to do something with a mission or one of his friends had died since the only time he'd seen Naruto like this was when Hiruzen Sabutobi the Sandame Hokage was killed by Orochimaru. Naruto my boy what would you like today? asked Tuchi as he smiles at Naruto. Naruto just looks at Tuchi with his bloodshot eyes. I want sake your strongest stuff, said Naruto in a tone almost void of emotions. Tucci eyes shot open, Naruto are you sure? asked Tucci before he can finish his sentence he's he's silenced by killer intent. Rr right I'll get you your sake, said Tucci he then coughs into his hand. Ayame chan I need a bottle of sake, yelled Tucci. Ayame who's in the kitchen nods her head, right I'll be out in a minute dad yelled Ayame as she exits out the kitchen with a test of sake and saucers. She smiles at her dad. Dad where's this going to? asked Ayame in a cheerful tone. Tuchi rubs the back of his head negatively causing Ayame to be reminded of a certain orange clad shinobi. This is going to Naruto. Said Tuchi pointing at Naruto while usually she'll blush at seeing her secret crush but at seeing the distressed Naruto causes her to almost cry at seeing Naruto so distressed and sad. Ayame walks over to Naruto handing him his large sake bottle. Here you go Naruto-kun. Said Ayame with a small smile her smile falter when Naruto didn't even say a word. As soon as the bottle of alcohol landed in front of Naruto, he started drinking from the bottle as if it was water normally this would amaze that someone could drink a bottle of sake this saddened Ayame since Naruto had never once drunk alcohol not even when Anko would trade him to some ramen at which she found herself jealous of Anko who would spend a lot of time with the lovable blonde. Naruto then slams the bottle of alcohol on the table, another. Said Naruto Ayame looks towards her dad if it was truly okay to give him another bottle Tuchi sighs and shrugs his shoulders Ayame went to the back to grab some more alcohol as she comes back she notices Naruto isn't even a little drunk. Naruto once again downs the bottle as if it's water. Ayame massages the side of her arm nervously. Um. Naruto what happened today I mean you've never once drank alcohol not even when you and Anko are here so what made you choose to drink? I mean you're still young? Asked Ayame. Naruto puts down his bottle staring at Ayame with a hard stare he then points to his headband. It's none of your business. And this headband signifies I'm an adult in the eyes of fellow shinobi and kunoichi meaning if I want to drink until my liver is destroyed then I'll do it, stated Naruto. Ayame frowned at this new when he became a ninja of Konoha he was automatically seen as an adult by other shinobi. Which also means she can't deny him while she hated seeing the man who she grew a crush on she sucked it up well at least for now. Hours later Ayame had decided to watch Naruto just kept drinking bottles of sake she feels like it's her responsible to make sure he doesn't hurt himself or anyone but she knew she couldn't stop a fight with or anyone even though the ramen shop is better much abandoned. NN Naruto-kun please tell me what's wrong. Pleased Ayame with tears getting ready to be ready. Naruto drunkly hiccups and looks at her who's clearly smashed. Why do you care? 
asked Naruto drinking the last of the alcohol the ramen stand is nearly covered in alcohol bottles. Ayame glares at the drunken Naruto. I care because I because you're my friend, said Ayame in a whispered like tone. Naruto just tisk at her, sure you are or when it comes to money, said Naruto rudely. Ayame just pouted at Naruto. Naruto let's go, said Ayame in an almost demanding tone. Naruto shot her a raised eyebrow. Why? slurred Naruto drunkly. She grabs onto Naruto's arm she blushes as her between Naruto's lean arms she looks up at Naruto noticing a blush across his cheeks she couldn't tell if it was because his arm is being sandwiched between her sea cup or is it that he's drunk? Because it's way more fun watching you drink now Kumon. Said Ayame dragging the drunk Naruto. As the to wander around the city neither choose to speak with her from Naruto being too drunk to start a conversation or Ayame from blushing as the two continued to walk they stop at a large hill below the hill as thousands of followers. Ayame looks up to Naruto and couldn't help but to blush at his handsome face, Naruto why were you drinking like that? asked Ayame in a meek like tone. Naruto looks into her brown eyes, why do you care? asked Naruto as he slurred. Ayame looks up at Naruto with a pink blush, because I care about you I just want you to go back to normal Naruto-kun, said Ayame in sad like tone. He narrows his eyes, Riyad, you missed Naruto Uzumaki, the loudmouth knucklehead ninja who's always yelling and screaming about being Hokage. You don't think I know when I'm being mocked at by my so-called precious people I know everyone in Konoha 11 sees me as an idiot and a screw up even after being trained by Aero Sanin the only people who don't see me as an idiot is Bushy Brows, Bushy Brow Sensei, Aruka Sensei, Enko Sensei, Captain Yamato, Sai, Shizun, Gara, Gemma, and Hanada Chan who's dead, yelled Naruto with fresh tears not even being bothered by the slow rain and cold breeze. Ayame was left shocked it all made sense to her that Naruto was pretty much drinking himself near death she couldn't believe it Hinata the girl who she was jealous of who in her opinion was Butte had died. She honestly felt bad for pestering Jim but the way he's handling it he'll most likely kill himself. She then glares into his cerulean eyes. You're wrong I don't see you as an idiot I see you as some great and I know you will become Hokage Naruto-kun. Yelled Ayame with tears running down her face. Naruto just stares at her. How do I even know you're telling the truth from what I know you're just lying to me Ayame Chan, yelled Naruto. Ayame then grabs onto his whiskered cheeks, it's 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 because. I like you Baka, yelled Ayame smashing her lips against Naruto the blonde is left shocked while he unconscious wraps his arms around her waist causing Ayame to moan into the kiss as they battle from dominance neither shinobi its citizen is bothered by the rain pouring on the two. Flashback end Naruto shakes his head from thoughts of his girlfriend. Naruto narrows his eyes at Kagaya. Seems like she's getting ready to move, said Naruto glaring at the mother of Chakra. Kagaya points her finger at Kakashi and his Suzano. Lava release. Empresses rule planetary might. Yotan. Kogo Ruru Wakuse Meida, said Kagaya. She shots a small ball of lava from her finger just as Kakashi was going to throw Kamui Sharingan at the small lava ball. It grew into a wave of lava shocking Kakashi and Sakura the lava then wraps around the Suzano becoming a sphere of lava. Kakashi grunts from the heat. Shit this heat is intense there's no way I can escape the only way to escape. Said Kakashi he then uses Kamui sending Sakura away from the lava sphere he then smiles. Goodbye you guys make me proud. Seems like I'll be joining Obito and Rin. Said Kakashi he then closes his eyes as his death comes. Sakura is Kamui out of the sphere falling one of Naruto's clone catcher she smiles him, thanks Naruto. Said Sakura. The clone nods team 7 looks back and sees the lava sphere collapse tears run down on Sakura's face. Sen before she could finish her sentence she coughs blood feeling something stabbed her. She looks down seeing the all killing ash bones, Tomogoroshi no Haikatsu. Lodge into her chest she turn her head towards Kagaya and is meet with another Tomogoroshi no Haikatsu to the face. Sakura didn't have enough to time to even scream she quickly turns to Ash dying just after her sensei. Kakashi sensei. Sakura, yelled Naruto with tears running down his face he glares heatedly at Kagaya. Kagaya glares at Sasuke. The Uchiha tries to use Amaterasu but the mother of Chakra absorbed it she then creates eight massive truth seeking balls she claps her hands thousands of black receivers come out. 
Sasuke quickly activates his Suzano, but the Uchiha wasn't fast enough and was pierced by the thousand chakra rods ending him and thus ending the Uchiha clan. She quickly teleport Naruto to Desert Dimension Naruto hits the ground roughly his ninja instincts come in he quickly avoids the killing ash bones he then glares at Kagaya. Where's Sasuke Teme? Growled Naruto glaring at the woman who caused his pain and suffering of the ninja world. Kagaya stares at the Asura incarnation with her eyes void of any emotion while Black Zetsu is smirking at Naruto the last member of Team 7 well that's if you don't count Yamato or Sai but those two aren't here with our blonde hero. Black Zetsu cackles evilly at Naruto making Naruto glare at Black Zetsu with hatred. Kukuku foolish Uzumaki. Isn't it obvious? He's dead. Dead just like that loser Obito, grinned Black Zetsu. This shocked and anger Naruto not because Naruto saw Sasuke as a friend. No, far from it unlike Kakashi, Ino, and Sakura who saw Sasuke their comrade even after all the things he did but Naruto no he hated Sasuke for trying to kill him not once but on multiple occasions. The son of Minato doesn't know what Sakura and Ino even saw him. Naruto honestly believed even if Sasuke had a family the Uchiha would most likely leave the family and not come back years later. But it wasn't just Sasuke trying to kill him what really made Naruto hate Sasuke was going the man who killed Hiruzen. A man who he saw as a grandfather and Sasuke joining the Akatsuki and attempting to capture Killer B. But what really pissed Naruto off is the fact that now Sasuke's dead there's no way to seal Kagaya away. Naruto grits his teeth in anger. Shit what the hell I do now, thought Naruto. Will you give up Asura incarnation now that Indra incarnation is dead? What hope do you have in defeating me? Asked Kagaya in a cold tone. Naruto glares at Kagaya. Hell no I'll never give up shadow clone just to, cage no bunshin. Yelled a confident Naruto. Creating 20 clones ex of the clone used lava release, nibi kaden release, boiling release and magnet release to create a cloak each of the clone charge at Kagaya. While his clones attack her Naruto was gritting his teeth in frustration and looked worried, damn it what the hell do I do now I needed Sasuke Teme to seal Kagaya, growled Naruto in anger as the rabbit goddess just stares at Naruto with a stoic expression. Uzumaki-san if I may, I have a solution to your problem that doesn't require Indra's chakra. Advise Hagoromo as he speaks to the one of the last Uzumaki through a mind link. Naruto is left wide-eyed as he stares at the Sage of Six Paths, Old Man Sage. What are you doing here? And what do you mean I won't need Indra's chakra? I thought the only way was to use both Indra's and Asura's chakra to perform the jutsu. Yelled Naruto staring at the old man who has a small smile. Hagoromo chuckles at Naruto. Uzumaki-san you don't need Indra's young senjutsu chakra to perform the Six Path. Planetary Devastation, Rikudo. Chibaku Tensai said Hagoromo he then smiles at Naruto's bewildered expression. Are we really BB but I thought I needed Sasuke to me's senjutsu chakra, said Naruto in confusion. Hagoromo shook his head negatively while stroking his long white beard, Naruto there is another way for you to seal my mother. Dot but I'm sure you won't like it, said Hagoromo in a serious tone. Naruto narrows his eyes. Whither I like it doesn't matter it's my job as the world's last hope to stop Kagaya if I don't then who the hell will? exclaimed Naruto Hagoromo couldn't help himself but to smile as he sees his son. Hagoromo nods his head happy to hear the claim, good to hear that Naruto. Now the jutsu I'm about to teach is a thousand times stronger than the Rikudo, Chibaku Tensai. While the jutsu was used to seal Jubi and my mother this technique will seal Kagaya into something or someone I guess you can say this technique is the first jutsu to seal a biju into someone making them a jinchuriki. This technique is called Six Path. Listening to many teachings, Rikudo. Bishamontan, now instead of using Indra's Senjutsu Chakra you will be using my own Six Path Yang Senjutsu Chakra, said Hagoromo. Naruto's eyes are wide open from shock out of all things sealing Kagaya into him wasn't what he was thinking normally he would argue about having a cold-hearted creature like Kagaya sealed inside him but the blonde knew this was most likely the only way to stop her. After all lots of his friends like Tsunade, Gara, Shikamaru, Choji, Ino, Kiba have died including the rest of the cages have fallen by Madara, Obito, and the army of Edo Tensai. Old man sage I thought you didn't have enough chakra, yelled Naruto in confusion. Hagoromo just smirks at Naruto. 
My child I am the sage of the six path now hold out your hand I'm going to transfer my yang chakra and knowledge of the Rakudo. Bishamantan. Advice Hagoromo Naruto nods his head and raises his arm Hagoromo is then encased in sky blue and gold chakra the mixture of the chakra then goes into Naruto. Naruto couldn't believe it the power he felt is unimaginable he could only guess how powerful he'll become when he seals Kagaya away. Naruto then looks at his right palm and sees a red red moon in his palm. Thanks old man sage, said Naruto as he exits out of his mindscape. He then glares Kagaya the pale skinned woman narrows her eyes at Naruto she couldn't but somehow within the few minutes Naruto had changed not physically but spiritually. His chakra is different before it felt like Asura's but now it feels like my son Hagoromo. Thought Kagaya she then activates her Byakugan. So, you do have my son's chakra I don't know how you have Hagoromo's chakra but it doesn't matter chakra will be mine and no child will stand in my way. Said Kagaya in a cold tone. Naruto grips his staff hard, if you want all chakra then you're going to have to go through me because I sure as hell won't let take away all chakra, said Naruto with determination. Eeeeeee, foolish Uzumaki you can't stop mother no one can stop her, mocked black Zetsu. Kagaya raised her arm, then so be it child's six path, goddess of dawn, Rakudo. Amanuzume, said Kagaya from her sleeves black crystals and splinters shot out of her kimono. Naruto clicked his tongue together. All right, old man sage, let's see what I can do. Six path sage mode. A thousand needles of death. Rakudo Senpo. Sensatsu Suisho. Yelled Naruto just like Haku Naruto creates a thousand water needles, but with the enhancement of sage art and six path, the needles change into gold water and the needle size increase that of a kanai. As the two jutsus clash Naruto notices whatever THR crystals and wood touches it will either CR distalize or turn them into wood. He narrows his eyes at this. So, it's just like Gurren's crystal release, Shaden. But it seems this jutsu instantly crystallizes everything it comes in contact, thought Naruto. Naruto then sighs and glares at Kagaya. Okay let's try this shadow clone technique. Cage no bunshin no jutsu. Scorch release. Hand of fate. Shikuden. Unmei no te. Sage art dust release. Atomic particle beam. Senpo jintin. Genshi bimu. Yelled Naruto and the clone. Naruto's fist is encased in a blinding light. He then thrust his arm and a flaming fist comes out while the clone shots a beam from his palm. Sage art combination scorch and dust release. God's true wrath. Senpo kumiawasi shikuden jintin. Kami no shin no akari. Yelled Naruto the combined jutsu becomes a blinding light of beam Kagaya eyes are wide open in shock not accepting such a powerful jutsu she uses her 80 god vacuum fists. Yesagami Kugeki. To block the powerful jutsu but suddenly the area is covered by a thick black mist. Naruto smirks to himself. Six path. Hidden mist technique. Rakudo. Kirigakir no jutsu, whispered Naruto. Kagaya chuckles. Hiding how pathetic and desperate Asura reincarnation, mocked Kagaya. You call it hiding I call it strategy you old hag, yelled Naruto Kagaya narrows her eyes as she gains a giant tick mark. It matters not ch before she can finish her sentence Naruto gave her a suckered punch which caught Kagaya off guard he then sends a massive barrage of chakra fist he then uppercuts her in the chin, that was for Sakura. Yelled Naruto he summons six clones and three of the clones throw themselves at Kagaya kicking her in the chest. That was for Kakashi sensei. Yelled Naruto each of them appear above Kagaya with six Rasengan fused with scorch release. Shikuden, ice release. Hayaten, light release. Koton, magnet release. Jishin, dust release. Jintin, and flora release. Shokuten. Each of the six Naruto are glaring the shock Kagaya. She hits the ground hard leaving a giant crater Kagaya stands up and glares at Naruto she raises her hand and preforms her all killing ash bones Tamagoro she no Haikatsu, Naruto narrows his eyes he then creates 60 shadow clones each of the clones are launched at Kagaya with each clone being dispelled by the deadly jutsu had created a giant smoke screen Kagaya quickly activates her Byakugan but she then turns it off when she is blinded by a bright light as if she's staring directly at the sun. Take this you paled bitch. Light release. Shining Dragon, Kotan. Shining Udoragon. Yelled Naruto Naruto exits out of the smokescreen covered in a bright blue light shape of a dragon, 
Naruto then takes advantage of the fact that Kagaya is shocked and hits her with his attack sending her fly away. Light Release, Kotan, is an advanced nature Keke Genke form through the simultaneous use of lightning and yang chakra. Light Release grants the user absolute dominance over the element of light. They can control even the light of others. With this ability, the user is capable of utilizing light in both manners of offense and defense. The composition of the light seems to shift from hard for offensive techniques and several defensive techniques to its regular form for mobility and most defensive techniques on a whim. However, it seems like they are light, the user's offensive attacks can only travel in straight lines, though in most instances, they are able to be rebounded off surfaces to shoot around corners. In addition, with this ability, the user can defy gravity to eliminate their own weight, making them more mobile and harder to hit. Mother be careful the Uzumaki brat is starting to learn his newfound powers, said Black Zetsu. Kagaya gets up and stares at Naruto. Hum interesting I've never seen anything like that before reincarnation of a Sura million pixie wave. Mirian Paikushawebu, said Kagaya she extends both of her hands her long fingernails are then covered covered in brown colored flames. The brown flames shoot from her fingers Naruto throws a rosin shuriken but to his shock the flames increased in size and multiple by ten times. Black Zetsu chuckles. It's no use boy no matter how many times you cut mother's Mirian Paikushawebu it will just multiple and there's no escape where you go it'll go you're fighting a losing battle, laughed Black Zetsu. Naruto just gains a giant tick mark trying to ignore the annoying creature as he jumps, dodges, and shunshin away from the flames but just as Black Zetsu had said whatever he moves the flames soon follow him. Okay if I can't dodge or cut them I guess my only hope is stop them dead in their tracks. Thought Naruto, after he weaves the needed hand signals, Flora release, Great Sawaro Barrier, Shokuten, Goreto Sawaro Barrier, yelled Naruto he then surrounds in a spherical juvenile cactus plant which then rapidly grows into a giant cactus that is taller than most trees. Naruto smirks as the giant cactus blocks the massive fireballs Naruto places his hand on the cactus. Flora release secret technique. Pinpoint needle cactus barrage. Shokuten Shikorido Dekuniku. Pinpoint Nidor Saboten, said Naruto every single of the sharp needles fire from the giant cactus heading towards Kagaya she then flies up dodging the volley as Kagaya looks towards the ground. She noticed the needles had pierced through the earth. And rocky terrain Naruto then uses his magnet release. Jinten. To command the iron sand, fox's iron vial. Fakusu no iron bear, said Naruto iron fox raises. From the ground the fox chases after she fires a volley. Of bones while some of the iron turns to ash the other parts become a wave and wraps around her like a dome. Iron dome of the ancients. Kodai no tetsu no domu. Said Naruto before Kagaya can get crushed she used her underworld slope hill. Yomotsu Hirasaka. But Naruto doesn't stop he flies up and gives her a hard right jab then an open palm to the forehead he then slaps both of his hands and hammer slams Kagaya on the head sending her to the ground. Kagaya snarls at Naruto she swipes left Naruto dodges right he then feels the powerful air current from the attack he doesn't even look back at the earth from being cut in half. She then teleports both Naruto and herself to the ice realm. Naruto back flips as she sends various of punches she teleports behind him her hands are then encased in purple chakra. 8 trigrams. Rabbit Silent Hill said Kagaya she then opened palms Naruto's back causing the blonde to hit the ground Kagaya is upon him in the matter of minutes she then thrust her hand into Naruto's chest, and know all the chakra shall be mine. Said Kagaya she then raised her short eyebrow as Naruto grins at her, smiling at death you truly must have gone mad. Said Kagaya with a sigh but just as she was about to rip her hand out of his chest he grabs onto her arm. You know what I really love clones dadbeo exclaimed naruto kaguya's eyes are shot wide open flora release vine growth shadow clone technique shokuten budo no sicho cage no bunshin no jutsu naruto then transform into a giant coleus plant he then wraps kagaya into giant vines she tries to cut the vines with her chakra enhanced strength but no matter how much she tries the vines only become stronger time to end this six path listening to many teachings rakudo bishamantan Yelled Naruto putting hand on her head both Naruto and Kagaya are enveloped in a bright purple light a huge powerful chakra releases destroying everything inside the two are then swirling around in a warm hole. No, this can't be, 
I won't be sealed away I'm Kagaya Otsutsuki the rabbit goddess mother of chakra. Yelled Kagaya as she's sealed inside Naruto. While she's fully sealed Naruto's appearance changes his skin becomes as pale as Kaguya's his nails becomes black. His once cerulean eyes changed to lavender and gained a third eye with the Rinisharingan, even Naruto's once bright blonde hair and become light blue silver and had grown past his shoulders, his whiskered birthmarks even transformed into six black bars and he even grew two horn-like appendages. His clothing even changed Naruto now wears he wears a long white kimono with magatama adorned around the collar. The kimono is held closed by a black long sash, he wears black pants, black sleeveless gloves over the gloves he wears a white armor gauntlet on each gauntlet as a red magatama, and he wears black boots. While he seals Kagaya Otsutsuki inside of himself Yin Kayubi is also merged with Kagaya restoring her to her true power but this also grants Naruto full control of Kaguya's abilities. And just like Obito and Madara he gains his own his Shikuho his is black in color with a full circle at the top with nine black rings around it while at the bottom has the form of a pitchfork with six black bars. It's a combination of Asura and Madara's look. As Naruto the third Kayubi no Kitsun Jinchuriki, the child of prophecy, and savior of the world is transformed into Naruto Uzumaki the Jubi Jinchuriki, the sage of the sixth path, and father of Chakra. Year 1702, Location Belize, Zunantanich within the dense jungle of the west a large wormhole opens from sky out of the wormhole Naruto then falls out of the wormhole groaning in pain as his body landed roughly on the hard grassy ground leaving a giant crater that is at least 10 miles long and at least 30 feet deep. Naruto gets up from the ground rubbing the back of his head he then look at his hands he then looks into a small puddle upon seeing his new appearance he lets out a chuckle he then extends his arm his shikuho flies into his palm. Well it seems like I've done it old man sage I've become the new father of chakra. Now, where the hell am I? Pondered Naruto as he looks around but he frowns as soon as he's unable to feel any chakra. Oh, this isn't good I can't feel any chakra not even from the grass and plants. Either all the chakra was erased from the world which is unlikely or I'm not in my own world. Said Naruto he then looks around and sees a giant metal contraption. Okay definitely not in the same world said naruto as he enters the metal contraption as he walks through it he can't help but feel as if this thing is way more advanced that thing he's seen before naruto then comes across a screen feeling a bit curious naruto pressed a button and a metal-like creature appeared causing naruto to tilt his head in wonder who are you demanded the metal-like being naruto narrows his eyes my name is naruto uzumaki the father of chakra who are you demanded naruto morphing his eyes into rinnegan the metal creature just stares at Naruto. I am ancient rays of cosmic entities known as the Celestials I've never seen anything like you before your genetic structure and I've seen millions of lifeforms over the centuries but I have never seen anything like you before where are you from Naruto Uzumaki? Asked the Celestial. Naruto nods his head agreeing with the machine. I came from a place well more of a village called Konoha the people from my world are ninjas while there are others such as samurais but our world is mostly populated by ninjas even the villages are run by ninjas like villages such as Konoha, Kirigakure, Iwagakure, Sanagakure, and Kumagakure are run by the Hokage, Reikage, Keisukage, Suchikage, and Mizukage are the village's strongest ninja. We train from a young age to join our village's military force. We use a type of energy known as chakra, which is essential to even the most basic technique. Through various methods, the most common of which is hand seals, chakra can be controlled and manipulated to create an effect that would not be possible otherwise, such as walking on water, exhaling fire, or creating illusions. Chakra is ordinarily not visible to the unaided eye unless it is highly concentrated or manifested in large amounts. This is rarely seen due to the restrictions of eight specific tenketsu known as the eight gates, which limit the amount of chakra an individual can release at a single given time. Chakra originally belonged to the god tree. When Kagaya Otsutsuki ate the fruit the god tree bore, she became the first person in history to wield chakra. With her newfound power, she ended all the wars that plagued the lands. Her sons, Hamura and Hagoromo Otsutsuki, were the first people to be born with chakra. Hagoromo spread chakra to others through a practice called Ninshu intending to create peace by using the chakra to connect people's spiritual energy so that they would understand one another without even talking. However, the people did not use chakra in the way Hagoromo hoped, 
instead using it to connect their inner spiritual and physical energies. They needed their inner chakra to amplify and weaponize it, creating what is now known as ninjutsu, explained Naruto. Interesting I can tell by just observing you are one of the most powerful beings how would you like even more powerful? I will grant you access to using this ship's technology but if you agree you will most likely have to repay back the debt in which would mostly cost you your life, stated the celestial. Naruto nods to himself while usually he'll regret the request but since he's in a world where he knows nothing about the technology of the celestial being will help him in understanding, fine I'll agree to your terms but just know if you come after me I will obliterate you from existence, threatened Naruto. Very well, Naruto Uzumaki this ship and technology is your said the celestial his face vanishes from the screen the ships light up. Naruto smirks to himself. No let's see where the hell am I, said Naruto. Year 1963 Location. Unknown the mutant superhero team known as the XX Men have been flying their Stakor space shuttle for about t20 minutes while her teammates were protected by the ship's radiation proof life cell. Telepath Jean Grey wasn't so lucky she was also the one piloting the ship towards Earth. Unknown to Jean Grey and her fellow X-Men she was affected by the cosmic radiation but today will be a day no one will forget. Just as the spaceship crash lands on the Jamaica Bay the ship is then rip apart as it bounces off of the waters. Cyclops clad in blue tights raises from the ocean taking in a huge breathe. Made it, yelled Cyclops. The other X-Men such as Wolverine, Colossus, Banshee, Charles Xavier, Storm, Nightcrawler, and Iceman resurfaced from the ocean. Cyclops, I was the last one out, yelled Colossus. Storm looks at Cyclops with a relief expression, then we are all safe, stated Storm, except for the lady who got us down, and I'm going back for her right now, said Cyclops leaving the room for no argument. Cyclops are you mad? You can't save Jean now, the radiation, the crash, yelled T. Nightcrawlet he blue-skinned mutant with his yellow eyes wide open. Cyclops growls in anger at the teleporter who's trying to stop him. You stopped me once before, Nightcrawler. Get in my way this time and I'll kill you, yelled an enraged Cyclops. Just before Cyclops could attempt to kill Nightcrawler with his optic blast something strange is happening where the shuttle had crashed. Luckily Colossus was the first one to notice, Cyclops, all of you look, something happening to the water, yelled Colossus in his Russian ascent. This had gained everyone's attention, right over where the shuttle sank, exclaimed Cyclops but underneath his protective goggles he narrows his eyes, but, what, wondered Cyclops. But before any of the X-Men knew it something shoots from the water they're shocked that Jean Grey covered in a fiery aura and wearing green, black, and gold costume with an emblem of a bird on her chest. Hear me, X-Men, no longer am I the woman you knew, I am fire and life incarcerated now and forever I am Phoenix, yelled the now named Phoenix. Location. Yingshu, China within a large celestial ship a man who's at least 6 feet 5 this man is clad in a large black cloak cover him the only thing you could clearly make out is the red rippled eye with 9 coma. In front of this figure is 7 cloaked figures. Omega level mutant detected. Mutant Jean Grey, X-Men. Codename Marvel Girl, Cosmic Detection, Cosmic Entity. The Phoenix, threat level, universal, said a machine. The cloaked figure smirked, showing his white canine fangs. It's time to finally make my move, said the figure. Cyclops, are you mad? You can't save Jean now. The radiation? The crash? yelled Nightcrawler, he blue skinned mutant with his yellow eyes wide open. Cyclops growls in anger at the teleporter who's trying to stop him. You stopped me once before, Nightcrawler get in my way this time and I'll kill you, yelled an enraged Cyclops. Just before Cyclops could attempt to kill Nightcrawler with his optic blast something strange is happening where the shuttle had crashed. Luckily Colossus was the first one to notice, Cyclops, all of you look, something happening to the water, yelled Colossus in his Russian ascent. This had gained everyone's attention, right over where the shuttle sank, exclaimed Cyclops but underneath his protective goggles he narrows his eyes, but, what, wondered Cyclops. But before any of the X-Men knew it something shoots from the water they're shocked that Jean Grey covered in a fiery aura and wearing green, black, and gold costume with an emblem of a bird on her chest. Hear me, X-Men, no longer am I the woman you knew, I am fire, 
and life incarcerated now and forever I am Phoenix, yelled the now named Phoenix. Location. Yingshu, China within a large celestial ship a man who's at least six feet five this man is clad in a large black cloak cover him the only thing you could clearly make out is the red rippled eye with nine coma. In front of this figure is seven cloaked figures. Omega level mutant detected. Mutant Jean Grey, X-Men. Codename Marvel Girl, Cosmic Detection, Cosmic Entity, The Phoenix, Threat Level, Universal, Set a Machine. The cloaked figure smirked showing his white canine fangs, it's time to finally make my move, said the figure. Recap end, one of the cloaked figures nods his head, yes course my lord, said the cloak figure who's bowing to him in respect. My lord if I may what are you going to do about the humans and mutants? Ask the cloaked person who sounds like they're female. The humans and mutants they're primitive and ignorant they say they hate humans even though they worship the Fantastic Four, Avengers, and Spider-Man. And mutants act like they are another race. Complained another figure the cloaked man's eyes open and the seven members are met with the Rinnegan causing them to kneel to the floor. The man removed the hood revealing it to be Naruto Uzumaki the father of Chakra over the years he had not changed once the only difference is that he grew in height and power not only had he gained all the abilities of Kagaya Otsutsuki and Madara Uchiha but he had gained his own slum of powers thus surpassing both Kagaya and Madara in power. The cloaked figures are a team he created called Koto Amatsukami. Naruto stares at each other with an unreadable expression on his face. You may remove your cloaks. There is no reason to have those things on, said Naruto. Each of them removes their cloak revealing their faces. One of the members look like Peter Parker but this isn't Peter Parker no this is Ben Riley, a clone of the webslinger Ben looks exactly like Peter Parker except he has blonde hair. A. N. The suit Ben wears is the suit from Spider-Man Unlimited. The other to remove their cloak is a woman with fair complexion she has emerald colored eyes, green eyeshadow, and she wears green lipstick. Her hair is green in color her name is Polaris Mutant Child of Magneto. Polaris wears a green long sleeve armored shirt, she wears green leather gloves, a green cloak, green tights, and green boots. Next to the metal manipulator is another woman she has ghostly white skin complexion, she has narrowed shaped eyes her eyes are coal colored orbs, and she has silky golden silver hair that reaches her back. She has a high ponytail. Her body is petite yet curving body with wide hips and large sea size size. This woman appears to be human but she was created by Naruto unlike Zetsu who's an artificial life form she's actually a living breathing being. Naruto had used his newfound god powers to create a person with her own chakra network not only that but this woman is an Uchiha but without the power hungry flaws of the Uchiha members in the past save for a few. Her name is Hachidori Uchiha, Hummingbird, she has water release, Sweden, and lightning release, Raiden, Naruto had also granted her with Mangekyu Sharingan but he had increased the power of the Mangekyu allowing it to evolve into eternal Mangeko. Her Mangekyu has the Suzano, Tsukinomi, Amaterasu, Koto Amatsukami, Izanagi, and Kamui. Hachidori wears a sleeveless leather shirt, black fingerless gloves, grey Kevlar pants, and black military boots. Next to the Uchiha is another woman who has a peach-like complexion, she has a mole underneath her right eye. Her lips are bright pink, and she has a heart-shaped face, her eyes are orange in color, and she has bronze-red colored hair. She keeps her hair in twin buns and a ponytail. This woman is a genetic altered human with the combined abilities of the Celestials and his own power he was able to create human of this dimension who has a chakra network her name is Tasuki Uzumaki, Lunar. She has Storm Release, Rantan, and Folum Release. On her back she is the seal of the cosmic chains. Yu Jo Suo, Uchukuzari, she wears a white, ankle-length kimono with lined patterns. The robe has an attached ornate collar, edges, and shoulder design with long, wide sleeves. There are long, flowing ribbons tied at her back that form numerous large loops. She has a small ice flower formation at the center of her chest, and a half crown of ice which Next her is Ileana Nikolaevna Rasputina younger sister of the X-Men Colossus he had saved her during her years in limbo she pledged herself to Naruto at which Naruto was thankful for. It also helps that he used his new powers to awaken her mind and see the world what it truly is. She wears a golden crown that resembles wings, she wears golden plates, on her left shoulder she wears a spiked shoulder blade, she wears a red gauntlet. 
On her right shoulder she wears a silver shoulder blade, she wears a silver armored gauntlet. She wears purple shorts that go past her buttocks, and wears a large brown belt around her waist. She wears a golden armored high heels. A. N. Her clothes are basically the clothes Angela wears when she appears in the Marvel Universe. Another person took their cloak revealing them to be a man this man has blonde hair, eyes that are completely white, and fangs. This man has an animal-like appearance he is none other than Sabretooth. Sabretooth wears a black and yellow suit. The upper body is made from Kevlar, he wears fingerless gauntlets. The cloak he wears has a white fur on the hood, the pants he wears has a yellow lining around it, and the boots he wears has spikes all around them. The last person removes their cloak revealing it to be Moira McTaggart an expert on mutants. She has dark neon blue skin, white colored eyes, and her once brown hair is now a dark ink blue. She wears black lipstick. Her DNA has been altered by the celestial technology making her a mutant. Her mutation had granted her with nanite manipulation. User can create, shape and manipulate nanites, machines or robots whose components are at or near the scale of a nanometer. More specifically, nanorobotics, as opposed to microrobotics, refers to the nanotechnology engineering discipline of designing and building nanorobots, with devices ranging in size from 0.1 to 10 micrometers and constructed of nanoscale or molecular components. This allows the use of nanotechnology. Manipulation of matter on an atomic, molecular, and supramolecular scale. The tiny robots that the users control can be programmed to build, destroy and cover themselves with metal. They can produce a suit of cyber armor made of sentient nanobytes that covers their body and is nearly indestructible yet still very agile. It also increases the user's physical attributes many times that of the average human. The nanites in the user's bloodstream can also have the effect of healing the user's injuries at an accelerated rate allowing them to regenerate before any normally fatal injuries could kill them. This power is able to upgrade vehicles or take over electrical objects by the use of a nanotechnology. When in use to upgrade vehicles, a cable will come out from the arm. The more cables, the higher, faster the upgrade. User can shoot a cylindrical bullet that releases nanites which override the electrical object programming. Moira wears a tight skin suit that's colored in black the suit has blue neon techno writing over it similar to that of a grid. Ileana who also goes by the name of Hex looks at the screen, what should we do now that the phoenix has awoken? Asked the blonde haired woman as she grips her sword tightly ready to kill anyone for her master. Sabretooth snarls at Hex causing the woman to turn towards him. I say we kill the woman. Said Sabretooth he then grins in a feral manner. Plus the runt will be so hurt knowing she's dead grins Sabretooth in a bloodthirsty tone. Naruto gives Sabretooth a toothy grin. As much as I love your bloodlust Sabretooth killing Jean Grey will only cause unneeded problems, said Naruto. Tasuki looks up at Naruto and gazes into his Rinnegan eyes the female Uzumaki bows to her leader, Kriatir. My lord what is your will? If you do not want this woman dead then what do you require of us? asked Tasuki in an obedient tone. Naruto glances at Tasuki with a stoic expression. Jean is too important I need her alive. Most likely the Hellfire Club and other criminal mutants want to use the power of the Phoenix Force and I know it is only a matter of time before the Phoenix Force takes over her. Said Naruto in a calculated tone. Ben raised an eyebrow at Naruto. And you suggest what we just let things play out? Asked Ben. Naruto shook his head negativity. No my webslinger. I want her power I want to. Enlighten her, said Naruto in a dark tone. Sabretooth matches the tone and grins, showing his sharp canine teeth. Do this mean I can finally kill the runt? asked Sabretooth. He lifts his hand and watches his claws turn into a cool silver. With this vibranium carbonadium hybrid, I can kill him, smirked Sabretooth. Ileana lets out a scoff at the savage mutant. Tisk, savage, said Ileana in an insulted tone. Sabretooth growls. What's that? snarled Sabretooth in anger growling at Ileana like an animal. Ileana narrows her eyes at Sabretooth. You heard me beast. You're nothing more than a wild animal that needs a leash. Said Ileana Sabretooth hissed at Ileana. The female mutant places her hand on the sword but before they can even fight each other a blue like web lands on Ileana's hand before she can react another web blast shoots her other hand planting her hands on the ground. Sabretooth nearly has whiplash when a blue webbing hits him on the mouth. Ileana looks shocked, 
what the, exclaimed Ileana. Sabretooth rips the webs from his mouth and glares daggers at Ben. Da Ben webs his mouth again Sabretooth rips the webs from his mouth. What the? But just like before he got a web blast to the face but the web fluid hit him in the middle of the face. Damn you webs, snarled Sabretooth. Ben who has a blank expression he then fires a couple of web at Sabretooth's eyes and mouth he then shoots a few more at Sabretooth's mouth and hand. Thank you blue web fluids. But, we don't have time for this we must get the phoenix to our side right master Naruto? Asked Ben as he turned his head and looks at the third six paths. Daisansha no Rikudo. The now white-haired Uzumaki nods his in agreement. That's right Ben. Sabretooth, you and Ileana can fight after we get Jean Grey. Moira how's your nano clone doing? Questioned Naruto as he turns to the nano mutant. Moira grins at Naruto. It's going well my lord the X-Men don't even realize it's a nanite not even the great Charles Xavier expects the Moira with him is nothing but a machine, said Moira. Good everything is falling into place all according to plan. Hachidori how is Mr. Sinister doing? asked Naruto. Mr. Sinister is doing well actually he's doing as you commanded, said Hachidori as she stares at her creator. Naruto allows a half grin to appear on his face. Good and soon like all the other false gods will fall, said Naruto. Location. New York, hospital it has been days since the phoenix has awoken inside of Jean Grey but now the X-Men and friends are inside the hospital waiting to hear about her condition but sadly the only thing the super-powered people can do is wait and hope for the best. The doctors have been with Jean such a long time. Are you sure there's nothing you can do? Perhaps use your telepathic powers suggested Moira as she stares at the crippled mutant. The aged mutant closes his eyes and has a stressed expression as he can't understand what's going on with Jean. Even with all his intelligence he can't figure what had caused this mysterious event to happen to his X-Man, only wish I could, Moira. But I can't. Any time I try to use them any great extent, my mind is savaged by my cursed dream. Even a little thing. Like mass hypnosis I used to get the X-Men away from Kennedy Airport very nearly brought another seizure. No Moira, I can help this girl. I once thought I love as much as you. I can't even help myself, said Professor X as he massages the temple of his forehead. Banshee turned towards Moira with a concerned look, ah, Moira, it'll be over soon. I'm thinking. I can feel it, stated Banshee. Moira looks at Banshee with a fake concern look, I'm not worried you brainless twit. Soon everything you X-Men know will be over. I can't wait to see the look on your faces when the end comes. Thought the nanite clone darkly. Colossus lets out a saddened sigh, poor Scott, said the Russian giant. Nightcrawler who's using a device to hide his mutation making him look human looks down in sadness. He's such a man of action. This endless waiting must be hell must be a living hell for him, said Nightcrawler. With Cyclops the X-Men leader Scott Summers can do nothing but sit wait with distress look, all those wastes years. When I loved Jean and she loved me neither of us had to sense to tell the other, and now if she does, it'll be all for nothing. I mean, what do you do when the light goes out of your life? When Jean moved to the city to build a life for herself out of the X-Men, I let her go because. I thought the X-Men gave my life a meaning, but they're not. It's Jean. It's always been Jean. Only I never realized it till now. When I'm about to lose her forever. Said Cyclops in a heartbreaking tone. It's not like you to argue with reality, Corbeau. Or to deny the evidence with your own eyes. Said a doctor who's in the operating room. Cyclops nearly snaps his own neck at how fast he turned his head to the door. Huh! Exclaimed Cyclops. A brunette man and a blonde haired man exit out of the door. Face it by friend. As Sherlock Holmes once said, once you exterminated the impossible, whatever remains, however impossible, must be impossible, said the beard blonde doctor. Cyclops quickly rushes to the doctors, dot how, is she, asked Cyclops in a worried tone. It's going to be touch and go for a while, with rest, proper care, friends to look after her. And I think Miss Gray is going to be just fine said Dr. McKay the X-Men and friends let out a roar of happiness Colossus lifts Storm up in happiness. Nightcrawler jumps up and down, Banshee lifts Moira up in gratitude, and Professor X releases a sigh of relief he did not know he was even holding. I saw Scott slip away when we all started to cheer, 
Dot the good news rocked him pretty hard. Which isn't surprising the strain of the last days has been eating him. I hope he's. Oh. Thought Nightcrawler as he sees Cyclops kneeling over on a bed with most likely tears in his eyes. Nightcrawler turned towards the X-Men and Moira. Scott is in the next room. Professor. He will be along in a moment, said Nightcrawler. No matter Kurt, I don't need Scott to say what I have to say. But I can only say it, if the rest of you do me the courtesy of quieting down. Pleaded Professor X with his voice laced with stress. Banshee who's holding the nanite Moira's waist glares at the professor, no need to snap. Charles, said Banshee. The professor waves his hand at Banshee in an apologetic manner. I'm sorry Sean. Dot the pressure of the last weeks are beginning to tell on me, too, said Professor X. Wolverine growls at Professor X his adamantium claws then came out of his knuckles. Stick it in the ear, bub. Cause none of us goin' anywhere till Genie is better. Snarled the vicious mutant. Which is part of the reason I'm sending you five X-Men on enforced vacation. Control, yourself, Wolverine. Dot and once in your life. Listen and think. You heard the doctor. Jean's recovery depends on the care and attention she receives. Care that Scott and I perhaps give me. Wolverine lets out a groan and narrows his eyes at the professor. Unfortunately, we can't look after Jean and run the X-Men at the same time. Therefore a brief. Well earned. Holiday is in order. Whatever happens I won't have you staying around the hospital you'll just get in the way. Said Professor Wolverine grumbles and unsheathed his unbreakable claws. I'm not sure I agree with what you're saying but. You're the boss. In. If. You're still undecided where T. Send us I think I can fill the bill. Said Banshee he turned towards the mutant telepath with a piece of paper in his hand. It seem. My lawyer. Writes to me. That I have inherited the Cassidy Ancestral Gnome, said Banshee. Let me see, asked Professor Banshee hands the note to the creator of the X-Men. It is a remote part o' country mayo, out on the Atlantic coast. Few conveniences, fewer people, said Banshee. All in all. A most excellent suggestion. Thank you Sean, you'll all leave as soon as arrangements can be made. And I hope you all have great time, said Professor X with a half smile. With Jean Grey as the X-Men leave and visit Banshee's country and the mutant activist and leader of the team stay behind there unaware of the sleeping Jean Grey while the beautiful redhead may look like she's having a peaceful dream she was actually her own battle within her dreams. As Jean continues to have a nightmare her nightmare suddenly stops with the hall. Jean looks in confusion as she searches through the deep void. WW where am I? Asked Jean Grey as she surveyed her surroundings. Isn't it obvious Jean Grey? You are in your mind my elegant bird. In short term you are within your mindscape, said Naruto. Jean eyes widen and looks around and couldn't see anyone. Who are you? What are you? demanded Jean narrowing her green eyes. Naruto chuckles to himself making Jean glare in the distance. What am I? I have been called many things over many lifetimes, Toad Sage, Child of Prophecy, Light of Leaf, Sage of Six Paths, Kami, Third Six Paths, Whirlpool Sage, said Naruto. But this did not easy that female mutant. Why don't you show yourself Sage? asked Jean, hoping to know who this person is invading her mind, but she knew this person must be strong to get past her mental blocks. Naruto smiles at the beauty in front. Is that what you wish, Miss Gray? questioned Naruto. Jean nods her head. Very well, Jean Gray, said Naruto. He appears in front of her wearing an all white kimono, but he doesn't have his usual appearance with the white hair. Instead, he appears before her looking as he did before he became the god of chakra. Naruto gives her a toothy grin. Is this to your liking? asked Naruto. Jean couldn't help but to blush at the affectionate toothy grin that was the famed Uzumaki smirk he used on so many. Jean shook her head telling herself she can't find this Naruto person since she's in a relationship with Scott. So, what do you want with me? Naruto? Asked Jean as she stares into his ocean blue eyes. Naruto then manifests a throne he then places his knuckles against his cheek it's not what I want it's what you need of me, said Naruto. Jean raised a brow in confusion, huh, what do you mean? Why would I need any from you? Asked Jean. Tell me something how goes the fight with mutant kind and homo sapien? Asked Naruto with an all-knowing tone. Jean's eyes shot open in surprise. How do you know about that? Asked Jean. I've been watching the world for some time now but I find it amusing. 
stated Naruto as if he finds the whole mutant versus human funny. Jean could only stare in anger at the man in front of her finding what she believes in amusing it wasn't just that but the fact he's laughing tea not only her but of all her fellow mutants who had died at the hands of the human's hatred. Amusing. You find my now the cause of the X-Men amusing you think every single mutant that was killed by both the hatred of the humans. Roared Jean in anger. Naruto just hums to himself not even minding the enraged telepathic woman standing in front of him. I find it amusing that you talk about humans as if you are a different race. Tell me how are mutants different than humans? I mean the only difference is that a gene changes you the gene will either bestow ability on you I know there are mutants mutation who changes their bodies like Toad, Nightcrawler, Mystique, and Hank McCoy. I mean look at Nightcrawler will they run in terror because he's a mutant or is it because he looks like he's a devil? said Naruto. He then rises from the throne and walks around, it's funny African Americans are discriminated because of their skin, while mutants are hated because of our certain mutation. Ah, uh, and yet even with evolution you are still a bunch of savages killing for your so-called cuz, said Naruto waving his fingers in the quotation manner. The redhead woman glares at Naruto. What do you mean savages? It is the damn humans who discriminate, kill, and even rape us mutants, screamed Jean. Naruto just stares at her, then what are you ex nen going on in public and giving speeches about how you are no different than humans? Asked Naruto the telepathic woman shook her head negativity. Have you decided take another approach as like the superhero route I mean look at Spider-Man he was able to get some of the people in New York to see he's a hero but yet you haven't but then again you people in this dimension seem to quick to judge. Said Naruto as he shrugged his shoulders. She looked at him with shock. This dimension you say that as if you're not from this world. Accused Jean as she pointed her finger at Naruto who's facing the opposite direction of her thus missing his calculated smile. I came from a world that was nearly destroyed by one person's twisted sense of morality, but I believe all the war won't end until people truly understand each other but of course sometimes people need a little influence. Said Naruto with a stoic tone. Jean looks down at her feet with a lost expression, so what do you want? mutants to be the superior beings asked jean the six paths shook his head negativity no what i want is peace but not for mutant kind dot but for both humans and mutants i mean with things going as their humans and mutants will never live in peace said naruto and what will do to attain this peace and what does this have to do with me asked jean in a cautious tone i will do what must be done simple as that jean my own world was consumed by hatred and discrimination. As a sage it is my duty to protect the world from all threats even if said threat has not come yet. But this everything to do with you. Said Naruto in a stoic tone with no visible emotions on his face. BB but why me? I'm nothing that special wouldn't the professor be better to go after than me? Asked Jean in a stunned tone. The sage shook his head negativity at Jean he then makes a tisk sound. While Xavier is a powerful telepath your own telepathic powers surpass his. After all you will need my help controlling the new powers you will gain in the upcoming events, but also I need you. You're more worthy to be a partner in what I plan to do. You will play a huge part I'll be leaving now but I'll just leave you will a final question. Are you sure you can trust Xavier? Asked Naruto and with that he vanished from her mindscape. Jean searches by the mysterious man but no matter how hard she couldn't find him, where did he go? And what did he mean can I trust the professor, he's the one who took me in and helped me understand my powers. Exclaimed Jean but she can't help but to take his words in account in the back of her head she can only wonder if Charles Xavier was the man she believes he is or someone else entirely but she also hoped he will come back again but she can't understand why was it her deep thoughts or the phoenix force hiding within her mind. With Naruto Naruto rises from his throne and flexes his fingers he then grins darkly Hachidori turns towards Naruto. Has it been done my lord? Asked Hachidori as she bows to her creator. Naruto nods his head, yeah it has with mind release, Shinten, getting inside her head was no problem really. All that must be done is to wait for the upcoming events to unfold. Said Naruto in a stoic tone. Hachidori's black orb eyes gazes into Naruto's own blue eyes, if I may my master. Why not use your powers to control her? Asked Hachidori. Naruto glances at her. I could control her mind turning her into a puppet, I could erase and brainwash her into my bidding but I believe to get them to see my way is better than simple brainwashing but I find this world amusing. Stated Naruto with a smile. 
Hachidori shot Naruto a raised eyebrow. Why you say that master? asked the Uchiha. Because for eons the humans have discriminated against each other not only that but they treat each other like shit all because of their certain view. In my own world ninjas would discriminate against other ninja because they believe that person is weak. Look at the Uchiha and Senju clan they have discriminated against each other since the beginning Madara was jealous of his rival and best friend Hashirama because of his accomplishments even my former best friend Sasuke grew jealous of me when I start becoming stronger but the other Jinchuriki were discriminated. Anything else you want to know? asked Naruto. Yes there is how come you never went back to your old world? asked Hachidori. Well it's not because I don't want to it's more than I can't you see when I was transported to this world the portal to my old world was close preventing me from returning but I saved my old world. It's now to save this world. Said Naruto. Yes, of course my master. We're your will. You ask and we will complete the will of our sage. Said Hachidori. Naruto smiles at this he then turned towards Sabretooth who's eating raw meat not even caring about the blood dripping from his mouth. Sabretooth I have a mission for you said naruto sabertooth grins in a predatory manner sounds like fun whatcha need boss grinned sabertooth naruto smirks at the mutant glad to hear that i need you to retrieve the black panther invisible woman and baron von strucker said naruto when do i leave asked sabertooth with a bloodthirsty tone naruto grins at this whenever you like also catch said naruto he then throws sabertooth a sleek silver and purple gun Sabretooth catches it and raises his eyebrow. What the is this? asks Sabretooth. It's a weapon I created, it can absorb the cosmic radiation off of the Fantastic Four. Whatever you want to do with the other members is all up to you, said Naruto, missing the bloodlust expression from Sabretooth. Naruto then walks towards Ben, who's working on his web fluids. Ben, I have a job for you, said Naruto. Ben Riley raises up. What is it, my lord? asked Ben. Retrieve the tinkerer any questions? asked Naruto Ben shook his head negativity. Good suit up. Ordered Naruto Ben nods his head he clicks a button on his watch and his suit comes to life. It'll be done, said Ben at which Naruto smirks. Because for eons the humans have discriminated against each other not only that but they treat each other like shit all because of their certain view. In my own world ninjas would discriminate against another ninja because they believe that a person is weak. Look at the Uchiha and Senju clan, they have discriminated against each other since the beginning Madara was jealous of his rival and best friend Hashirama because of his accomplishments even my former best friend Sasuke grew jealous of me when I start becoming stronger but the other Jinchuriki were discriminated. Anything else you want to know? asked Naruto. Yes there is how come you never went back to your old world? asked Hachidori. Well, it's not because I don't want to it's more than I can't you see when I was transported to this world the portal to my old world was close preventing me from returning but I saved my old world. It's now safe from this world, said Naruto. Yes, of course, my master. We're your will. You ask and we will complete the will of our sage, said Hachidori. Naruto smiles at this he then turned towards Sabretooth who's eating raw meat not even caring about the blood dripping from his mouth. Sabretooth I have a mission for you, said Naruto. Sabretooth grins in a predatory manner, sounds like fun whatcha need a boss, grinned Sabretooth. Naruto smirks at the mutant, glad to hear that I need you to retrieve the Black Panther, Invisible Woman, and Baron Von Strucker, said Naruto. When do I leave? asked Sabretooth with a bloodthirsty tone. Naruto grins at this, whenever you like also catch said naruto he then throws sabertooth a sleek silver and purple gun sabertooth catches it and raises his eyebrow what the is this asked sabertooth it's a weapon i created it can absorb the cosmic radiation off of the fantastic four whatever you want to do with the other members is all up to you said naruto missing the bloodlust expression from sabertooth naruto then walks towards ben who's working on his web fluids ben i have a job for you said naruto Ben Riley raises up, what is it my lord, asked Ben. Retrieve the tinkerer any questions, asked Naruto Ben shook his head negativity. Good suit up, ordered Naruto Ben nods his head he clicks a button on his watch and his suit comes to life. It'll be done, said Ben at which Naruto smirks. Recap end. The people of earth have such little minds even the smartest among them don't see the big picture their things in this world far for more important than their villains. 
Avengers, X-Men, Fantastic Four This world is far bigger than you know and it far more dangerous beings in the universe, thought Naruto but the heroes of Earth are just humans who have been shown to care for their only interest this planet was no different than his own except the gap in technology and the military doesn't have a lot of influence like home he knew others like Orochimaru and Madara would have a field day with this planet but luckily for them they have him. The people of Earth are lost selfish creatures always fighting among themselves actually humanity has always fought with itself ever since the first civilization had appeared they had always fought even before the knowledge of metahumans, inhumans, and mutants. War seems like one thing humanity knew how to do. Naruto then stares at the hologram of Earth he then zooms in on the hologram watches as a bunch of Middle Eastern soldiers kills some citizens the scene change into an image of Russia and sees Russian soldiers taking away Russian metahumans and mutants. If it's a war they want they it's a war they could and it be a war like none other. A war where everyone loses. Says Naruto he then stands up and looks at a screen where various of villains appeared. These are SHIELD's threat level. Asked Kurama who just woke up and he had to admit some of these men and women look like average villains while others look like they would like they would fit on their home planet. What's with the metal man? Asked Kurama staring at the image of Dr. Doom. Victor Von Doom the ruler of Latvia. he has mastered both technology and magic. He's on the top of SHIELD's most wanted even the world's mightiest heroes have a trouble with him. Said Naruto even Tony Stark and Reed Richards have a hard time dealing with the powerful man. Hachidori. You think he'll join? Asked the Uchiha. She then turns to Tasuki, who just shrugged her own shoulders. No, knowing Doom, he won't side with us, but with Susan Storm, he'll come after her. Said Naruto with a sly smirk on his face. Both Tasuki and Hachidori look at Naruto with curiosity, not sure what he's thinking. Why do you say that? Asked Tasuki from what she knows the woman is married with Reed and has a child. While he is a power individual he has two main weakness. The first being he wishes to his mother from Mephisto and his love for Sue and we'll use the weakness for advantage. Smirked Naruto with a wide grin on his face it didn't matter how powerful Dr. Doom may be because compared to him Doom is just a man in a tin can. Tasuki and Hachidori bows to their blonde leader. Yes, of course Lord Naruto says Tasuki who trusted their creator both were extremely loyal to Naruto not just because he created the two but they trust him and his plans. Naruto turns away from the screen and turns to the female, Tasuki, Hachidori I need you to search for Miss Marvel and bring her here, said Naruto both females bow their heads to their leader. Nagato seems like you were right, only through pain can peace be achieved and I shall bring pain to this planet said naruto he then begins to think back when he first found out about superhero the concept honestly amazed him until he was the endless cycle they were in naruto what would you do if those cosmic beings arrive and destroy the planet asked kurama naruto knew he was talking about galactus a being whose sole purpose was to devour planets the giant cosmic planet eater was one of the necessities of the galaxy naruto grins darkly the grin would even make the snake sonin proud simple kurama i take his power for myself Grins Naruto he could only manage what he could do with the power of one of the most powerful cosmic being in the universe. With Scarlet Spider, Ben Riley narrowed his eyes as he spots Shocker from the intel he had received Shocker had been getting new upgrades from Tinkerer it seems like the two are worker together no doubt a plot to kill Spider-Man. The clone of Spider-Man takes out a spider theme disc and tosses it at Shocker the small gadget explodes trapping the man's legs. WH what the hell? The wall crawler exclaimed shocker he then narrowed his eyes he fires a blast at ben who quickly jumps in mid-air dodging the vibro shock blast ben then shots a web at his gauntlets not quite the name is the scarlet spider says the blonde-haired parker so what you're his cousin mocked shocker scarlet spider watches in curiosity as his webs suddenly fall apart he then grins at the clone any last words before i fire you bug grins shocked as his feet are then free yeah, your mama was a buzz taper. Insulted Scarlet Spider, this angered the man. He then launched another blast of vibro shock. He jumps off the building with a backflip. He then shots a web shot at Shocker's face. He grunts in frustration as he tries to remove the webbing. The blonde Parker shots web fluids at Shocker's hands. He then shots another web line at the man with his incredible strength. He slams the man back into the ground, causing him to grunt in pain as his bones were cracked. The Scarlet Spider then jumps into of the man causing him to his in pain Scarlet Spider wraps his hand around Shocker's throat glaring down at the yellow costume man. 
Tell me where the tinkerer is. Demanded Scarlet Spider to show he means business his suit grows sharp talons and runs them down Shocker's chest which draws blood. On his gauntlet a few buttons glows red Scarlet Spider's eyes narrowed he then backflips away as a silver disc from his gauntlet the small disc explodes in a powerful electrical output throwing him back Shocker grins at him. You may not be the wall crawler I know but a dead spider is just as good as any other, grin Shocker he extends both arms out and blast him with a powerful blast. The spider metahuman grits his teeth in frustration he then digs into his suit pulling out a spider theme gadget puts it on his wrist he then shots a web at Shocker who screams in pain as he's being electrocuted the scarlet spider grins at this. Electrical webbing, thought scarlet spider he fires a web line at Shocker and kick him out the chest he gets ready to fire another vibro shock black but he quickly grabs hold of his arm and with zero effort he easily breaks his arm. Shocker screams in pain, A-G-H-H. You bastard you broke my arm. Screamed Shocker in pain he's then punched in the jaw with a vicious right hook that broke his jaw he tries to use his other arm but the gauntlet gets crushed which caused it to explode and severely damage his right arm he's then punch again and his nose is broken the scarlet spider then savagely beats down on the man unfortunately he was just a normal human and with each punch it shatters his face. He then removes Shocker's mask and sees his battered and mutilated face, tell me where the tinkerer is? Growled Scarlet Spider Shocker breaths heavily he then spits blood at the Scarlet Spider's mask. FYYU. Groaned Shocker in pain he then screams again as the Scarlet Spider casually breaks his rib. Scarlet Spider then raises his hand above Shocker's face. You know how Spider-Man can stick to walls. I wonder what happens if I do that. To your face. Wonders Scarlet Spider as he watches Shocker begins to sweat with fear sweat begins pour down as his hand gets closer. Okay. I'll talk. Jay just stop. He's in an abandoned building on the east side of Flatbush, says Shocker. He nods his head. Thank you for your help. Says the Scarlet Spider he then placed his hand on Shocker's face and ignoring his cries for and with one swift moment he easily crushed his head he then rises to his feet and pressed a button on his suit which activates the suit's sheath mode. Sorry, couldn't have you talking. Says the clone bee then webslings to a building and launched himself high in the air and uses his web cape to glide through the air. After gliding the air and webslinging building to building he finally found the abandoned with a life form detected in a very high electrical signature. Scarlet Spider grins widely he then enters the building from a window but just as he enters his spider sense begins to go off he then forced to jump back as a robot comes down and fires energy blast at him. Scarlet Spider quickly jumps over a robot tiger he then backflips and fires a barrage web bullets at the robot with the machine trapped in webs he then sticks to the ceiling and watches as the robot blasts the other robot with its eye beams he then shots a taser web at the robot which short circuits it causing it to fall back. He then easily dodges a few bullets from the tinkerer he then throws a small spider device it explodes cover his hand in a glue like substance just as the old man was trying to reach for another web he's then shot with a small dart. Tinkerer stares at his shaky hand in shock. WW what the hell? Dot did you do T? Me? Asked Tinkerer as his vision starts to become blurry the elderly man takes a few stumbling walks before he hits the ground. Just a paralyzed dart. Comes in handy it can even bring down the juggernaut, says Ben picking the old man up before leaving he placed a small cybernetic detonator. With Tasuki and Hachidori location, San Francisco. An explosion can be heard by a bank as it is being robbed and no doubt taken hostage various of cops surround the bank each of them feeling uneasy one of the officers who just arrived on the scene turns to their partner. What the hell is going on? Asked the confused male officer. A robbery done by none other than the absorbing man in whirlwind, says the man as he takes a drink from the coffee. Any demands? Asked the man. The officer nods his head. Yeah, a helicopter and fifty grand in cash. And if they don't get it in the next two hours they're killing everyone in the bank. Ah, uh, hissed the man wishing he didn't wake up this morning. Out of nowhere the speedster mutant Quicksilver arrives shocking many of the people they then hear a sound in the sky they look up and sees Miss Marvel the cops sigh in relief at the sight of the two heroes. Oh thank god you guys are here. Both whirlwind and absorbing man are holding the people hostage. The two heroes nod their heads Miss Marvel smiles at them reassuring them e everything will be fine. Don't worry we'll handle this. Quicksilver can you get it in and split the two up and get the hostages out? Orders the blonde hero. The son of Magneto nods his head in agreement, and what about you? You'll be taking on the absorbing man. 
asked Quicksilver Miss Marvel just smirks at him causing the white-haired speedster to smile at her he then gains a playful grin. Good thing they ain't too smart. Joked Quicksilver he then vanished in a dash of purple within the bank they hear a noise absorbing man nods at Whirlwind who gives him a small nod and creates a whirlwind to speed over he looks around seeing nothing he's then suddenly push causing him to fly into a wall. The man gets up and launched a whirlwind attack from behind as he turns around he doesn't see anything he then looks around and doesn't see anything he scratched his head in confusion, what the hell? Mumbled the confused whirlwind he then hears another noise and fires another whirlwind he looks with a deadpan look as a small rat flies across the room, a rat. Then what the hell hit me? exclaimed a confused whirlwind. On the other side of the wall the silver-haired man grins he then stealthy leans over and looks at him he extends his hand and his arm spins rapidly until a cyclone gust that launches him straight into the wall knocking him out Quicksilver smiles he then runs to where the hostages are being held and take them out one by one. Whirlwind groans in pain as he slowly rises to his feet, ah, what the hell was that? Growled the mutant unfortunately he's then punched in the jaw by an unknown the punch was so strong it not only shattered his helmet on contact. Whirlwind flies through various of walls until he's slammed into the room that the hostages were kept Quicksilver and the rest of the hostages stare in surprised as Whirlwind crashes through Whirlwind looks up and sees Quicksilver, an Avenger, groans Whirlwind both hero and villain stares at Tsuki Uzumaki with confusion, another Avenger. Asked Whirlwind. Quicksilver shook his head negatively, never seen her before, says Quicksilver. Her eyes glances to the hostages, Quicksilver, and finally Whirlwind. Storm release. Laser wand Rantan. Reza Wando says to Suki she fires the jutsu creates a powerful laser that shoots from the hand. The beam rapidly expands as it is fired and upon contact, creates a small explosion of caused blinding then as they open their eyes they look on in shock as the only thing left is his lower half. Quicksilver narrows his eyes at the mysterious red-haired woman, who are you? Asked Quicksilver in a serious tone with a hunter worry. She looks at him coldly. You aren't on the list, says Tasuki. A million thoughts run through his head at what she said before he can question her. Two black clouds suddenly appear behind her. Storm release. Arctic cloud technique. Hakyokumo no jutsu. Says Quicksilver, sensing danger, he quickly dodges to the left, avoiding a black lightning bolt. The man grins at her. I've dodged lightning from Storm and Thor. Joke the man another lightning bolt is released this time heading towards a civilian fortunately he was fast enough to grab the hostage he then zoomed out of the room Tasuki follows behind him and is shocked as she catches up to him and slams a flying kick to his back sending him flying across the room. He quickly dodges the lightning bolt strikes he then creates a small twister she easily jumps above it and brings down her heel which he dodges to the side. He then vanished from her sight and strikes her in the back she quickly picks herself up from her back amethyst colored chakra chain emerges from her back quicksilver grows as the chain nearly hit him he wipes of blood from his cheek. Petro continues to dodge as the chain tries to impale him but he keeps dodging, just as the chain tries to pierce him through the back the speedster quickly ducks low he then falls down as another chain is wrapped around his leg to his utter shock hundreds of thousands of cosmic chains to emerge from the surroundings and completely bind the man, preventing him from moving. Suddenly, he is dragged into another dimension and sealed away. Just as Miss Marvel enters the bank she stares in confusion at the scorched marks which confused her it even confused more as she finds Whirlwind or what's left of him along with the dead hostages that are severely burnt. After walking around the bank and not seeing Quicksilver anywhere, her eyes went wide as she finds Absorbing Man or what's actually left of the bald man the man was missing an arm and leg and he seemed to be on fire she stares at the black flames that consumed him with caution. What the hell happened here? Quicksilver where are you? wondered Miss Marvel. Out of nowhere two females appear out of a swirling vortex the Ravenette woman looks at her with a blank face Miss Marvel glares at the two. Mysterious women she watches the Ravenette's dark colored eyes morphed into red her pupil changes and resembles that of an atom. That will be us, says Hachidori causing the blonde superhero to glare at her. Where's Quicksilver? Did you kill him? Roared Miss Marvel her eyes glow a bright yellow glaring at Hachidori with her body emitting powerful surge of energy. Idiot, says Tasuki in the low tone she watches Miss Marvel gains a dazed look as Hachidori puts her under the Tsukinomi Miss Marvel might be one of the Avengers strongest heavy hitters unfortunately she was no match for one of the most powerful genjutsu they then watched as the former pilot is sucked into the Kamui dimension. Location. 
Baxter building the thing is pushed back by Sabretooth the man glares at the mutant with a heated glare not only had this psycho broke into him home but also tried to kidnap she and her son Franklin so this mutant made it extremely personal. Ben looks down at his shoulder and notices a shallow scratch he then charges at the man gives him a left hook to the face which is following a punch to the gut he then uppercups him causing his nose to broke but Sabretooth's wounds quickly heal. Sabretooth kicks his lips and grins darkly at him the thing charges at him again sending a punch to Sabretooth's face he then begins to just repeatedly punch his face with everything he has he then headbutts Sabretooth. What do you want with Susie and her kid? growled the thing gritting his teeth again. Sabretooth licks his own blood causing the thing to look at him with disgust the blonde he remembered the stories Wolverine would tell him about Sabretooth and the Rockman was even more disgusted about what Wolverine told him. Sabretooth smirks at him. Wouldn't you like to know? mocked Sabretooth with a grin. The charged at each other, the thing glares at him while Sabretooth grins madly. It's C L O B B E R I N, time. Yells the thing, the hero of the Fantastic Four sends Sabretooth a bone crushing punch while Sabretooth slashes at the thing, which took out the thing's right eye. The thing grits his teeth in pain and punches him in the gut, sending Sabretooth flying in the air. He then grabs his leg with a death grip, which breaks his leg. The thing then slams him into the ground repeatedly. He releases his hold. He then hits him with a lariat. The hit was so hard it has sent Sabretooth right through the Reed Richards laboratory. As he rushed to Sabretooth, he watches as he heals in a matter of seconds. Sabretooth smirks at the thing. He then released a low chuckle. You really are fun? Ready for round two? Question Sabretooth he then charges at the thing with blinding speed surprising him with a mighty roar he slashes at his chest he then jumps in midair and sends a double kick to his chest but the thing quickly grabs onto his leg and throws him with a 360 spin toss. Sabretooth smashes through several of Reed's inventions Sabretooth grins to himself as he gets up he then gains a dark look in his eyes as he stares at Ben. His size then increases rivalry the size of the thing his features change becoming far more feral that resembles an actual saber-toothed tiger both his claws even become more sharper and deadly the thing stares in utter shock at what he just saw. Now I believe you said it's clobber in time. Says saber -tooth. in a mocking tone the hunter suddenly appears in front of him shocking Ben Grimm and lands a devastating punch to the gut which causes him to double over at the shock he was sure something was broken. Damn it. I didn't even see that psycho move. Shit. I can't breathe. Thought the thing Sabretooth grins at this and casually grabs hold of the thing's head and gives him a crucial uppercut the punch was so strong some of the rocks were chipped off. This causes Sabretooth to grin madly he grabs his head and brutally knees him in face an audible crunch can be heard Ben Grimm drops to floor with blood pouring out of his mouth. Here let me give you a hand says Sabretooth grabs him by the arm and with a sadistic gleam in eyes with a swift chop he slices his arm off Ben Grimm screams in pain at the post of a limb. Don't be so down it builds character. Said Sabretooth with a feral grin on his face as he then kicks the thing in a chest who gasp in pain and coughs out blood. I love to stay and chat but I have things to do. Says Sabretooth as he pulls out the weapon Naruto have him he pulls the trigger and a purple energy beam hits the thing he watches as he slowly turns from rock monster to regular human being. As Sabretooth transforms back to his normal form and size he then begins to sniff the air and wide grins spreads across his face. Found you. Grins Sabretooth as he walks away from the bleeding Ben Grimm and heads towards one of Mr. Fantastic's flying vehicles. While the other members had made it to one of Reed's other labs each of them were worried for the thing they knew he was strong enough to fight the Hulk but they also knew just how dangerous and deadly Sabretooth is he is after all on SHIELD's top most wanted list in most governments. The main door is locked down by Sabretooth who grins at them Mr. Fantastic glares at Sabretooth as he stands in front of his family stretching his limbs. Where's Ben? What did you to him? demanded Mr. Fantastic he narrows his eyes at Sabretooth as he watched the mutant grins larger. Dead, said the smirking Sabretooth everyone looks on in horror at what he just said Franklin then begins to cry while Sue hugs her child both Mr. Fantastic and the human torch glare at Sabretooth. Why why you bastard? roars Reed he then stretches his arm wrapping it around Sabretooth but before he can do anything else Sabretooth tanks the arm back and headbutts Reed he then shots Reed in the stomach everyone watches in shock as Reed body turns back to normal. M my powers. But h how? 
exclaimed Reed as he's unable to stretch his body his eyes then widened at the weapon he knew this weapon was far too advanced for Sabretooth to create it was possible it was made by Doom but he knew his rival and nemesis wouldn't have sent the psychotic mutant he would most likely do it himself or send one of his Doombots. My boss wants the kid and the blonde, says Sabretooth he then tightened his hold until a snap can be heard and drops Reed lifeless body a large fireball is then thrown at him he ignored the flames and jumps at him he is thrown back by a flame blast Sabretooth then shoots him with the gun the human torch then drops to the floor he then groans in pain a force field covers him Sabretooth turns to Sue who's glaring at the man. I'll go with you just leave my son alone, said Sue. What? But you can't Sue. This guy is nuts, exclaimed Johnny. I'd listen to him if I were you, says Sabretooth he shots her in the chest with a tranquilizer dart he then shots her son before setting his, right on Johnny. I have what I wanted but there's still the loose end, said Sabretooth with a dark look Johnny glares at him. Time skip Naruto smiles as he watches the news of the death of Mr. Fantastic, Human Torch, and the thing many were confused on who killed them, how the thing was turned back to human, and where was Invisible Woman and their child. Supervillains such as Shocker, Whirlwind, and Absorbing Man were also found dead there was even reports that both Miss Marvel and Quicksilver were missing and no one knew the cause of the death of the heroes and villains. Many of the heroes were mourning the death of their friends while the villains were suspicious who did this and why. The Russian mutant smirks at screens, and no one suspects a thing, says Ileana with a smirk on her face. It won't be long before they found out, says Polaris watching various of people cry over the death of the Fantastic Four. It doesn't matter. Even the smartest heroes and villains band together they are no match for me the heroes just lost one of the smartest men on their planet they won't be looking for someone new they'll be looking for his enemies. He was a smart man but he made lots of enemies they'll believe it might be doom or some alien race he angered, said Naruto with a grin. Ileana turns to Naruto. Should we takes out the other intelligent heroes? asked Ileana she was feeling quite restless just sitting around while others were out she always was curious just how powerful Doctor Strange is. She watches as he shook his head negatively, not right now for now let the heroes scramble to solve this case. I know you're just itching to fight Doctor Strange don't worry you'll have your chance. Says Naruto Ileana nods her head he then turns towards the greenette, and you'll have your chance to go after your father. Said Naruto she too nods her head they then watch as Naruto uses various of hand seals, six path, creation of life, Rakudo, Seime no Sozo, says Naruto both female mutants watch as three animals are created from thin air the animals he made was a salamander, snake, a small phoenix the three creatures stares at Naruto he then turns to both Polaris and Ileana, take these three to the home of the inhumans and kill Medusa, said Naruto the two now at him. He then hands the two a device both pressed a button on small device both of their appearance changes turning them into Magneto and Psylocke. These devices allow you to not only take the appearance of Magneto and Psylocke but their voices and powers with the death of Medusa they will believe the brotherhood is behind the attack. Said Naruto Naruto then opens a portal to the home of, of the Inhumans the two walk through the portal as the portal closes Naruto grins darkly at the destruction that'll be made. The end. Now we will see you in the next video.